Number 43. Compare the atomic and molecular orbital diagrams to identify the member of each of the following pairs that have the highest first ionization energy, the most tightly bound electron, in the gas phase. And then we have to decide whether B, boron, or B2, is going to have the highest first ionization energy. Now, just know that when we're talking about ionization energy, we're talking about the energy needed to lose an electron. And if you're talking about the first ionization energy, this is the energy that's needed to obviously lose the first electron. And generally, you lose your electrons from the highest energy orbitals. So keep in mind when we do this problem that we're going to be losing from the higher ups or the most high orbital that we can get. Now, if we're searching for something that it has the highest energy, high energy amounts means that you got to work for it, right? If you have to have a high ionization energy, that means that you had to undergo a lot of stress to remove that electron. So the higher the amount of energy to lose that electron, the harder it is to do. So just keep that in mind when we're actually going to be deciding between B and B2. But now we have to fill this diagram up. Now just know that the uh, lines, aka the orbitals that are flanking the sides of this junk over here, these are your atomic orbitals. So I have two atomic orbitals. So the atomic orbitals are always on the side and the molecular orbital is always in the middle. So your atoms, atomic, they are just your sim, your, no, uh, your single atom. So in this case, we're talking about B. So Bs are going to be on the side. And then your molecular, aka your molecule, that's going to be in the middle. So B2 is going to be in the middle. Now, in order to draw out these orbital diagrams, you got to know how many valence electrons there are here. So I look on the periodic table and I see that boron is in group 3A or 13, but that's lucky number three. So in this case, boron has three valence electrons. And we're gonna use that information to fill up uh, this diagram. So we always do the atoms first, because it's just easier. So for each boron, I need to put three valence electrons. But for the atomic diagrams, I got to start at the lowest energy and work my way up. So I'm going to start at this line first. And remember, each line has a max of two electrons that have to be filled before you move to the next level. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to put my one electron here. And then we have to put the other electron to have that max of two. And then you can go up to the top. So one, two. And then I come over here, there's three slots. I just like to work from left to right. So I put the last one over here. That's a total of three. So I do the same for the other atomic orbital for boron. One, two, and then I guess three. It doesn't really matter. Should I put three over here? I don't know. Maybe we'll do threes. <laughs> so now your molecular orbital is the total of how many electrons are on the side. As many electrons that you have on the sides have to equal the total in the middle. So since I have three on the left and three on the right, I have a total of six. Three plus three is six. And just like before, you got to start from the bottom and work your way up. So one, I got to fill this one, two. Now I go to the next one, three, four, and now I come over here. These two orbitals have the same amount of energy. So they're equivalent in energy. So I have to place kids on the school bus. I have to put one in here and then go to the next seat before I double back. But this is now six electrons. And now let's see where the energies lie. So for your atoms, the highest energy electrons are right here. So I'm just going to make a line here and say that this was where the energy ended. And maybe I'll do this in, in black because I did put B in black. So we'll do that, star it up, and say that this is B. And then for B2, these are the highest energy orbitals. So maybe, let's see, beautiful. So I'll put this over here. 
and this would be B2s. Now, in terms of energy, right, as you go higher and higher, you're talking about stability. The more energy that's in the molecule, the less stable that it is. So the atom B is less stable. Maybe I'll just get rid of that. Less stable than B2, which is more stable. So that's actually, ooh, Christina, get your handwriting in order. There we go. Okay. So now, from this stability idea, we have to talk about the highest ionization energy. The highest first ionization energy is the energy to remove the first electron, whether it's going to be from the atom, which is up top here, or the molecule, which is a little bit lower. But remember, if you have a high ionization energy, in order to lose that electron, you got to put a lot of energy in. It's really, really, really hard to do. So the higher the energy, the more stable the compound or the molecule or the atom. So in terms of stability, your more stable molecule would require a lot more energy than the less stable counterpart. The less stable atom is like, okay, since I'm not stable anyway, you could take that electron. But the stable B2 is like, I really don't want to give this electron up. So that's the difference between the two. So the highest first ionization energy would be B2. And that is it for this one. What'd you think? Let's color it in pretty, beautiful. And that is it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers at the moment. And it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much for all your support throughout this whole journey. And if you wouldn't mind, tell your friends or your classmates about this channel. We might be able to help them out as well. We've been getting such kind comments about how, you know, we're helping students all over the world with their classes. We also have physics and math videos on the channel at the moment. So go check it out. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.